In the last video, we saw various set operations, such as union, intersection, set difference, and set complement. Now we're going to talk about these operations as they're used on indexed sets. So we're going to see what an index set is. So if we have a number of sets that are indexed, that's what these little subscripts mean, that these uh, sets are indexed as part of a universal set, um, we can have as many of these as we want. What we're going to start with is talk about the union from i equals 0 to n of a of i. So what this is, is this is a0 union a1 union a2 union all the way up to union with a n. So this is probably a new symbol for most people. Uh, think about it, it's very similar to the summation symbol or the product symbol that we've used before. Um, it is an extra large U. You can find it in um, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and so on. It is one of the mathematical operators. And it's useful for talking about when we want to union a large number of sets. So if these are my sets, if, if we go, if n is 4, as in this example, and we have the union of i equals 0 to 4 of a i is going to equal, well, it's, it's anything that's in a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4. All right, because the union is kind of like an or, and it's going to include everything that's in any of these sets. So this is the union. It's that entire region. Again, we could say this is A1 unioned with A2, unioned with A3, unioned with A4. Similarly, we can talk about the intersection from I equals 0 to n of a i. And this is going to be a 0 intersect a 1, intersect a 2, intersect all the way up to a n. And if you recall what intersect means, it's really where do they overlap? So what is the region on this diagram where all of the sets overlap? That's kind of a strange shape was just a spot right here. Right? It's where they all overlap. And so again, this we could write, this is the intersection of i equals 0 to 4 of a i. Um, it's going to give us that. So let's see some examples of these in the real world. So here we have um, a set. We say for all i in the positive integers, we're going to define um, a of i to be the set containing all real numbers x such that x is between negative 1 over i and positive 1 over i. So this question is asking, what is the union of the sets from i equals 1 to 3? Well, so first of all, I'm going to notice that I can represent, um, if we were going to say for, right, we have i as all positive integers, that means we start at 1. 
So this is negative 1 on the number line to positive 1. And I'm going to say a of 1 is equal to, now notice we're not including, there's no equal sign here, so we're not including the values. So we're going to have open circles. It's going to be everything in this range. So another way of representing that is that this is 1, 1. This is called interval notation. Right? And so I could represent um, negative, excuse me, that's negative 1 to 1. I could represent negative 1 over i to positive 1, 1 over i by negative 1 over i to positive 1 over i. And again, this is because we don't have an equal sign on these less than symbols. If we did, say we had an equal sign here, then this would be negative 1 over i to positive 1 over i inclusive. So you see how the square bracket means inclusive, so it means it could be equal, and the curly or the, the round parenthesis means it cannot be equal. So at the moment, this is what we've got. So writing this out, I'm going to have that this is equal to A1 union a2 union a3. All right. Well, what is a1? Well, we've seen what a1 is. So this is negative 1 to positive 1. Union, all elements. Let's look at a2. What's a2? So this is a1. Let's do a2. Um, is going to be when i is equal to 2, but notice that's going to go in the denominator, so we're going to have negative 1 half to 1 half. This is going to be a 2. So this is negative 1 half to 1 half. And then finally we have a 3. A3 is going to be, this is negative one-third, to positive, actually this, this is poorly done. This is going to be, oh, that was right, negative one-third to positive one-third. Right there, so this is A3. So we're going to union negative one-third to positive one-third. Now, look at this drawing I made. Where, now notice, remember this is a union, so anywhere one of them is, is in union. Well, A2 and A3 are both part of, or subsets of A1, which means it turns out that the union for this entire thing is actually just going to be negative one to one. Because all numbers on, say, A2, uh, A3, so here's maybe one-fifth, is in A3, that's also part of A1. So this is another we can say is A1. And similarly, um, right here, if we did three-quarters, for example, that's also part of A1. And if we do... Uh, whatever that's going to be, say one quarter. That's also going to be part of A1. So any number we pick on any of these number lines is all going to be part of A1. So we can conclude that this union is going to be, so this union is going to be A1. Okay, let's do one more like this. We've got the same set, except now I'm asking, what is the intersection 
Um, and we're getting the intersection going all the way to infinity. So again, let's draw this number line. Zero. So we saw how we have A1 goes from negative one to positive one. And then we have A2, we have, we had, yeah, negative one half to positive one half. Right. And then we have A3, it's from negative one third to positive one third. But we're talking about going to infinity here. So what's a, uh, a, a million? Well, it's going to be negative one millionth to positive one millionth. Right, and so I'm running out of colors here. But that's going to be super, super close. Should be a round open dot. Right, it's going to be so close together, you're not even going to be able to see the difference. And as this number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, because this is going to go to infinity, what is going to be included? Remember, we're doing intersection now. What's going to be included in all of these sets? Right, so the intersection says it has to be in every single one of these. Well, we're going to get infinitely small. So as um, we approach infinity, the numbers get infinitely close to zero. So only zero is going to be in all of them because it's never actually going to get to zero. Right, so this is going to be zero because we're going to get infinitely close, right? 0 0.000001 is still going to be inside one of these sets. But the number zero will never actually be reached because no matter how big we get, we approach zero on both sides, but we never get there. So this is how we can apply um, these set operators, especially intersection and union, to index sets, even infinite sets, and even an infinite number of sets.